Well, thank you, Lee. That was very generous. Um, and uh, I am really delighted to welcome you all to our annual Robert Menzies Institute Oration and Gala tonight here at the Park Hyatt. And it was just only, I think, 11 months ago when we celebrated our first gala, as Ian Cover has told you, at the Grand Hyatt down the road. And what very, very different circumstances that was in. I think we were the only event in Melbourne town. And we certainly rolled the dice holding an event in between lockdowns and with all those pandemic restrictions. But it's wonderful tonight to have a much bigger crowd than we had last year and without restrictions, and let's hope with the worst of the pandemic behind us. Uh, as Lee said, I'm the inaugural CEO at the Robert Menzies Institute. We're based at the University of Melbourne. Uh, there are, as, as Lee mentioned, many special people here tonight, but uh, there are two I would like to um, make note of and particularly welcome, and they are Sir Robert's grandchildren, Alec Menzies and Diana Menzies. It's so wonderful to have you here with us tonight. Uh, the Robert Menzies Institute is the sixth Prime Ministerial Library in Australia. We're the newest, uh, and we honour the life and legacy of Australia's longest serving Prime Minister, who served from 1939 to 41, and then again from 1949 to 66, cumulatively over 18 years. And with the tumult of, of modern day political life, I don't think that's a record that will ever be beaten. Our home is in the old quadrangle at the University of Melbourne, and I know there are a lot of law student, well, former law students in the audience tonight, and you will know that if you went to law school more than 20 or so years ago as the old law school. We occupy the east wing of that beautiful old quad, and there we exhibit items from Sir Robert's personal library, which he donated to the university in 1976. And we have items on display from cultural institutions around Australia. And if you haven't visited us yet, please do. It's a, a wonderful exhibition and you'll learn so much. And for those of you who are alumni, a lovely trip down memory lane, I'm sure. We undertake research into the Menzies legacy with a particular focus on the things that he championed around the rule of law, foreign policy, education, and the evolution of Australian liberalism and democracy. We hold a range of public events, as Lee mentioned, and lectures, as well as a vibrant schools program and speech competition for high school students, so we can bring alive the spirit of Robert Menzies for the next generation. Prior to entering politics, Robert Menzies had a successful career at the, at the bar here in Victoria. He'd studied at Melbourne University as a law student from 1913 to 18. He appeared at the age of just 24, it doesn't even bear thinking about, uh, in the High Court, his first unled appearance in the engineer's case. And again, for the lawyers in the room, one very familiar to you, I'm sure. His great mentor in law and in life was the Chief Justice, Sir Owen Dixon, and he acted as Sir Owen Dixon's junior in a dozen cases at the High Court and in numerous cases before the Supreme Court of Victoria. At the age of just 34, Robert Menzies became at the time Australia's youngest ever King's Counsel, and later as, a, as the Federal Attorney General, he would appear before the Privy Council. Menzies' great love was the law. And he thought this should always be seen against a human background and not something desiccated and detached, unrelated to the life of human beings. He favoured parliamentary supremacy and argued strongly attempts, uh, against attempts to enshrine a Bill of Rights in the Australian Constitution on the basis that it should be the Australian people through democratic processes who should decide the character and content of their rights not codified laws and codified ideas. In retirement, Menzies wrote a book, Central Power in the Australian Commonwealth, in which he explained how the federal government 
had expanded its powers without democratic approval. And that was, of course, something that had hugely benefited him as prime minister. But it was something that concerned him as someone committed to the supremacy of parliament and the rule of law. Many of the concerns and views of Sir Robert Menzies are shared by our guest speaker tonight, which is, of course, why we have been so delighted to bring and host renowned historian and jurist Lord Jonathan Sumption to Australia for a 10-day four-city tour. And he is, he is just still standing, having spent the last week going from Melbourne to Brisbane to Canberra to Sydney and now back to Melbourne. And it's it's been wonderful to spend this time and hear um, with him and hear all the things he's had to say. Sitting here in 2020, in 2021, here in Melbourne, the most locked down city in the world, Lord Sumption came to prominence uh, for many of us here for the concerns he raised about the threat to our civil liberties and democracy. And likewise, during World War I and beyond, Robert Menzies raised concerns about the rule of law in a time of war and crisis. I know on these topics you will very much enjoy hearing from Lord Sumption later on. Finally, tonight is a celebration of our past year and a coming together of our friends and supporters honouring Australia's longest serving Prime Minister. As a non-partisan and char charitable organisation, we are dependent on the generosity of you all and we are very grateful for the support we've received over the last 18 months, especially during such difficult and uncertain times. It was through this period that we basically online were able to put together our research program, develop our museum exhibition and our schools program. It's wonderful to have you all together in a room in person. Um, it's a shame we're not in the old quad tonight, but uh, we decided we'd bring the old quad to you tonight in our video. I hope you enjoy this short video and thank you very much for your support. Thank you.